Well, hey there, and welcome to the Midwest Basement, where we celebrate Midwest taste in a classic Midwest environment. Down here, the accents are always thick, the ceilings are always dropped, the walls are always paneled, and the beer fridge is always stacked. Each month we'll recommend a beer, wine, and spirit made right here in the Midwest. Now it's January, which means it's so cold outside that dogs are attaching themselves to fire hydrants. So we've got some nice warming picks for you this month. Let's start with our beer. We are starting the year off right with the Grand Stout from Giant Jones Brewery. You had to guess we were starting with a porter or a stout in this cold weather, right? And yes, you are right. I do have a branded pint glass that is not from Giant Jones Brewery. But like every good Midwest basement, I don't own pint glasses that are not unbranded. So we're gonna go with it. Let me tell ya, this hits the spot. This is a big robust stout ranging from nine to 9.9% depending on the batch. It gives dark stone fruits, plum and fig, and then it moves into really dark espresso and almost a bready quality, but not yeasty. This is not a yeasty beer, but just that feeling you get when you bite into a piece of really dark warm bread. It finishes with a delicious, really dark chocolate flavor that is not sweet. We're talking dark chocolate here. We're talking about that adult, delicious chocolate taste. Giant Jones Brewery is a women owned and operated business located in Madison, Wisconsin. Everything they make is USDA certified organic and pretty much nothing is under 9%. <laughs> I think I've had a 7% beer by them once, but honestly, everything stays in the double digits normally. And honestly, when the weather is negative double digits here, it all makes sense. You can get their beers from the brewery, which I always recommend if you can. Their tap room is really fun and located in downtown Madison, Wisconsin. You can also get their beers from a smattering of bottle shops and bars throughout Southwest Wisconsin. A full list of where you can get their bottles is located on their website that I'll have linked below. All right, moving right along to the wine. So I initially wanted to showcase a really big, robust red as it is colder than a mother-in-law's kiss outside, but I decided to go a slightly different way. And since this is the first episode, I decided to go as Midwest as possible while still being a red wine. This month, we are showcasing the Marquette from Cedar Creek Winery. The Marquette grape is about as Midwest as you can get in the wine world, as it is an interspecies hybrid grape variety developed by the University of Minnesota and introduced into the wine world in 2006. An interspecies hybrid means that it is a crossing between two different vine species. In this case, it is Vitus vinifera, which is the old world vine and grape traditionally used in winemaking, and Vitus riparia, which is a new world vine uh, and thus not usually suitable for winemaking by itself. Old world vines are often crossed with new world vines as new world vines are much better at resisting mold, mildew, bugs, and diseases. So what does it taste like? Well, this is a dry red, which means it is not going to be sweet and there's going to be very minimal residual sugars in it. The tasting notes from the winery mention dark cherry and blueberry. So you are still gonna get that fruit flavor coming forward, just not with any sugar in it. Now the online reviews of it from vivino.com did mention dark fruits, berries, some light acidity, and that it would go great with pasta. And who doesn't want warm carbs this time of year, am I right? You can pick this up from Total Wine for $16.99, or you can visit the winery, which I always recommend, located in Cedarburg, Wisconsin. Let's move on to the spirit, shall we? I don't know about you, but the cold weather has me wanting to sit in front of a beautiful, warm, roaring fire with a nice, strong glass of whiskey. So this month, we're recommending the Cast Strength Bourbon from J. Henry. This is the Patent Road Reserve, and the J. Henry website calls it dangerously drinkable high proof bourbon. And let me tell ya, we agree. This is the second bottle of this in our household, and while it does take a bit of time to go through the bottle because it's a sipping whiskey, it still goes by pretty quickly. 
J. Henry is a family-run distillery located outside of Dane, Wisconsin, which, yes, is located in Dane County, but there is also a village of Dane. But I do not recommend making this into a cocktail. I would recommend drinking this straight with maybe a little dash of water if you want to open it up a little bit. J. Henry does make other bourbons that would make a mean old-fashioned, but this, this is just a sipping whiskey. Well, that's it for January down here in the Midwest basement. Do you not like that I chose mostly Wisconsin booze for this episode? Well, too bad, I am hosting. But I would love your help for upcoming episodes. Do you have a favorite beer, wine, spirit, brewery, winery, or distillery that you want me to share with the crowd? Drop it down below, I will give them a try, and maybe I'll include them in an upcoming episode. See you February 1st, and in the meantime, stay warm, my friends.